I've known Jen for a long time, but I'm still going to read this intro. Jen Band is the founder and executive director of Playing for Others. She believes that the two most important questions we can ask ourselves are, who am I and how will I give of that? And then when we do, we transform the world. Jen also believes in cupcakes, laughter, and sleeping with a teddy bear. I'm going to let her speak to those things. So without further ado, let's welcome our speaker on work, Jen Band. completely unplanned, the high five thing, but we're going to go with it. All right, good morning! Or, as my dad likes to say, top of the morning to you. By the way, he's not Irish, like he just likes to say it, right? And when somebody asks him how he is, he answers, how you doing, Mr. Bay? Jim Dandy Ginger Peachy, no other way to be. Like, how great is that? Every single time somebody asks him how he is, he says, without fail, Jim Dandy Ginger Peachy, no other way to be. Now, I love when it's going to be a Jim Dandy Ginger Peachy kind of day. And one key habit, one small thing, ensures I'm going to have one of those kinds of days. Every morning I wake up and I take my first sip of Diet Pepsi. <laughs> and I decide what I'm going to eat for breakfast. Now, it's been said that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And I can believe that. I just don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> because when I feel about that, I feel pressure. Like I am supposed to whip up fresh fruit mixed with yogurt, drenched in fresh squeezed orange juice with five almonds, sans the salt, and 2.5 ounces of egg whites. What I really want and what I usually eat are two pieces of bread with butter on top. Right? It's simple, effective, efficient. It's going to be a Jim Dandy ginger peachy kind of day. I heart the morning time, especially when I get up and not hit the snooze button five times and sleep an hour longer. I love the quietness of morning, the alertness I feel, the promises of the day ahead. What I don't heart is nighttime. And I especially don't heart Sunday nights. I get sad, super sad. My mind starts thinking about all the people who will get up Monday morning and go to a job that they hate, or just kind of like, or simply okay. My mind can get so worked up over the thought of this, which is really none of my business, that I can literally find my eyes filling with tears. 
And I have to wonder why. Why am I in such distress on Sunday nights? Why do I care so much about the choices other people have made for themselves? And I think it's because of how I feel about passion, how I feel about living a meaningful life, how I believe Howard Thurman when he says, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. I hear that quote, right? <laughs> I hear that quote and everything in me comes alive. Everything in me screams, yes, right? So I'm thinking about me. I'm thinking about what makes me come alive. I'm thinking about what I need to eat for breakfast to have a Jim Dandy ginger peachy kind of day. And it hits me, bam, brother. Bread equals who I am the combination of my mind, body, and spirit. Butter equals those things I'm passionate about, what makes me come alive. The two merge, butter. <laughs> There's no separation. You don't know where the bread ends and the butter begins. <laughs> they aren't two separate entities, but rather one in the same. It's not like chips and salsa where you dip a chip toe in the salsa on the weekends, or maybe you dunk a full chip in the salsa every once in a while. It's not like cheese and crackers. It's not like carrots and hummus. It's more like a cheddar biscuit, or a cinnamon bun, or a milkshake, brother. If Howard Thurman is right, and what the world needs is people who have come alive, then why aren't we all doing it? Why aren't we all walking around with light beams shooting out of our faces because we're so alive? Why aren't we all having a Jim Dandy Ginger Peachy kind of day? I can't believe we are not all brother. <laughs> Simply put, I think we need to turn up the heat. I think we need to toast our bread and let the butter melt in. We need to become buttery toast, AKA butter. So these are Jen's four tips for turning up the heat, colon, from chips and salsa to butter. <laughs> Step one, the willingness. Now, hmm. Once told me that the inside of our house is a reflection of the inside of our mind. And I'm looking around my house and I'm seeing the dog hair in the corner and the dishes in the sink and the laundry piled in the corner of the bedroom because it has somehow not made it into the laundry basket because it is still on the other side of the house in the laundry room and wonder wait a second, is the state of my house really a reflection of the state of my mind? Or is my mind being reflected in my house? If we want to turn up the heat and become brother, it starts with the inside work. Anybody recognize these voices? That's not possible. What are you thinking? Nobody wants to hear what you have to say. You're not as good as so-and-so, and you're definitely not an expert like such-and-such. You should stay where you are. Are we willing to question these voices? Are they really our own voices or are they coming from well-meaning friends and family around us? Step two, open palm. This is one of my all-time favorite phrases. Hold it with an open palm. I have this idea, this relationship, this desire in my life. I hold it with an open palm. I set my intention, I focus my attention, and I release all tension. When I am looking for the thing in my life to show up that isn't there, I have to hold it with an open palm. Think of it this way. Let's pretend a butterfly is the thing in your life that you're passionate about that currently isn't there. You set your intention. 
I want a butterfly. You focus your attention. How does it feel to have that butterfly? You release all tension. What can I do to make the butterfly more welcome? Can I buy a little butterfly couch? <laughs> can I get on Amazon Prime and get a mini butterfly foot bath if they even have feet? How can I act as if the butterfly is already there? Okay, I've done all those things. I am ready for the butterfly to show up. I wait. No butterfly. I wait some more. No butterfly. I wait a little bit more. No butterfly. I panic. Where is the butterfly? Why isn't this happening for me? Why isn't it here? I suck. I'm awful. I don't deserve the butterfly. I am spinning in my chaos of uncontrollable thoughts and they are draining the life out of me. Meanwhile, the butterfly is flying around, waiting to land on your open palm when it sees you shaking your fist and it's like, oh, hell no, I'm not going anywhere near that swirling vortex of chaos. I think I'll wait a little bit longer and it flies away. Or scenario two, you set your intention, focus your attention, release all tension. The butterfly lands. You grab it. You don't mean to, but you start to crush it. You suffocate the butterfly because you're so afraid it might fly away. Think about that with relationships. How many of us have crushed the butterfly because we were so afraid it might fly away? We hold so tightly that then it feels like the person is slipping through our fingers. Our job is to hold it with an open palm. If it's in harmony and alignment with who I am, my bread, it will stay. If not, it will fall away. And I bet that a something better still will take its place. Open palming it. It's a verb now, is perhaps one of the hardest lessons I have ever had to learn. And I am still learning it. I can be totally impatient. Just ask my staff. I can want things to happen right now. Like, I don't want to wait. I have to practice patient expectancy. Quiz question. Is anybody in the room pregnant? <gasps> are you? Uh, I've got a month left, so. Eight months, right? Okay, yes, fantastic. So no one in this room is going to walk up to you, lean down, get right beside your belly, and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> Hurry up! I can't wait any longer. Get out of there. Right, like we're not going to do that because we know it takes nine months for the bun in that oven to be done. <laughs> we practice patient expectancy. With other things in our lives, we don't know how long it's gonna take to show up. We have to trust, hold the faith, get ready, and expect its arrival. We have to open palm it. Step three, the realization. I love how many times we hear, you get to choose. Everything is a choice. You are the author of your own story. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, I'm the author of my own story. I'm the star of my own play. I'm the center on the football or basketball team or whatever sport where center is the most important part, right? <laughs> and everybody gets all excited and they're cheering and feeling super empowered and then it hits, bam, condition and circumstance. Like the two evil villainous characters from the old school cartoon, Rainbow Bright. Murky and Lurky. <laughs> Murky is the voice of condition. I don't have the money to start my own company or launch my own business. Or I can't get a job doing what I love. I don't have a degree in it. Lurky is the voice of circumstance. 
ah, uh, I, you know, I've got kids now. I'll pursue my passion once they graduate from college. <laughs> or, I've been in this job for 19 years. I have health care, I have benefits, I have retirement. I can't just leave now, that would be irresponsible. And here's the crazy thing. As villainous as murky and lurky are, they can be very seductive. They can sound logical, reasonable, smart. They can sound safe. They can sound like our own voices or the voices of well-meaning people around us. They're tricky little boogers. They don't want us to stand out. They want us to be good enough. If we all believe that there are big things for each of us to do in the world, if we realize that we have the power to choose, that condition and circumstance, murky and lurky, are merely that, then we truly open ourselves up. Then we become the author of our own story, and it is an epic one. The title of mine, if you're going to jump, you might as well leap. The inscription on the first page, she created a brudder reality. <laughs> and step four, killing the should. I believe the most dangerous word in the English language is should. And it amazes me how many people allow others to should on them. <laughs> it's disgusting. You should have a degree you can fall back on in case that one doesn't work out. You really shouldn't do that, it's impossible. You should get a real job. In what world do we think it's okay to should on somebody else? <laughs> Not a single person on this planet can fully understand the inner workings of another human being. No one can begin to fully know what another person's passion is, what makes them come alive. Who are we to should on somebody else's toast? <laughs> and why are we shoulding on ourselves? I should exercise more. I should stay where I am. It's easier. I should just settle for this. It's good enough. Either you want to or you choose to. You want to because it's a core value for you and you live on purpose and in alignment. Or you choose to because that's what you're stepping into. You are going to act as if. You're not going to fake it till you make it. You're going to play the part until you become it. I believe that life is meant to be lived. And time flies. It's already November, and I still have Christmas decorations up from last year. <laughs> Should I take them down? No because they make me happy. And besides, I'm totally ahead of the game. <laughs> it's time to release the word should. Kill it, stab it, suffocate it, drown it, whatever crazy criminal minds thing you need to do to stop using the word should. Whew. Okay, recap. Jen's four tips for turning up the heat, colon. From chips and salsa to brudder. <laughs> Step one, the willingness to do the inside work. Step two, open palming it. Step three, realizing we get to choose. And step four, killing the should. And that, my friends, is the real work. That is how we turn up the heat toast our bread, and let the butter melt in. And by doing so, shift ourselves and ultimately transform the world. Howard Thurman, my new BFF, once said, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Today, I hope you'll say to yourself, I can't believe it's not brother. <laughs> Ask, what makes you come alive? Toast your bread. 
become brother and have yourself a Jim Dandy, ginger peachy kind of day because quite frankly, there is no other way to be. Thank you.